2007, Friday morning, June 22nd, and we're about to open our airport. <coughs> and, uh, at this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Davis. Well, let me, and let me interrupt uh, Mr. Walker because I think uh, we need to preface something here that uh, the public, whatever, as, as a, an authority and the board, whatever, realize that the dynamics of our authority is changing with some extreme difficult responsibility and specialization. So we used to have a facilities committee and, and now we're breaking it down into areas of a little bit more specialization and so we can do a, I, I could say, fine tuning our job is fine-tuning our job as goals and aspirations as a, and for our, for our team players on the other side. So this is the first time we're going to meet as an airport committee specifically versus facility meeting. So that being said, you're probably going to say the same thing, so I saved you all that air time. So <laughs> but anyways, uh, that, that's where we're at. So. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Airport Committee Chairman, also Mr. Chairman, um, there is a draft airport committee charter in front of you. I'd like to talk about that under other such matters. Um, again, good form of new committee would be to adopt a new charter. Um, not requesting to adopt it today, but uh, we consider it, modify it, and perhaps at the next meeting. Um, as uh, the chairman mentioned, the committees have been restructured by asset, and uh, for the airport, for example, there will be a marketing, a standing marketing component, and a standing operations component uh, to not only the airport meeting but all other committee meetings as well. Um, in that. Uh, in that vein, let's go ahead and jump right in with the marketing initiatives and things that uh, will hopefully generate revenue for us here at the Authority. And at this point, I'll turn it over to um, John Morrison. John? Okay. Um, well, certainly, I guess you may be slightly out of order. I know we're looking for time here. We have an RFP out. Uh, well, it actually will be issued, uh, officially issued on uh, Monday uh, for ATM services at the, at the airport. Um, that would generally be, we'd be looking for a concession fee, uh, annual concession fee for something like that, essentially <coughs> working with uh, trying to establish a location, and we think we have that with uh, McFarland Johnson. Um, we'll be looking at uh, a vending machine or machines. Um, next, i got to find out what kind of space we have available, and then we'll be looking to try to get something out like that so we can also look at, and I would imagine that would be set up similarly. Um, I will be talking with uh, Countrywide, in fact, I tried to contact them yesterday uh, about car rentals to try to set up an agreement with them. Uh, it is my understanding that there, there may be other interest in that, although I don't believe that's on our property. Um, looking at a media kit, uh, what I'd like to do there is develop essentially something that anybody could review that would highlight what our advertising opportunities are at the airport as the terminal starts to come together. I think that will give some clarity to the amount of space, what we have, what we have available to offer. I also would like to try to have advertising space that would be available on our website. I did speak with our webmaster actually, that while well, person is developing our website this morning, um, I think things are coming along. He's had a little bit of difficulty and with some script, we want to basically be able to have live feeds so that if you check your anything from weather to um, flight status and things like that, that, it, that it's all essentially in real time. He's had a little bit of trouble coordinating some of the uh, some of the script on that, but he said he's working through it. So I think he actually said one of the big sections we still need to look at is the airport operations section. That's something I need to get together with Patrick on, but I think we're moving in that regard. Um, you know, we've talked about taxis and it's something else, something that, you know, how we're going to deal with that out at the airport. Um, you know, we have a, an idea that we need to kind of run by map code, but that essentially taxis would be charged a, that for entering, they're going to have to go through and have some type of car to be able to get in and out of the parking. And that they would essentially be charged a per, per trip fee that they would essentially just add on to their customers for any airport types of visits, which really isn't inconsistent if you're taking, air, or taking taxis, see all their different fees lined up on their windows. So um, that would be something that I think can also, that we'd also would be looking at right now. Um, 
Let me let me stop you there a little bit. I mean, uh, maybe Andrew's got a different answer for this than whatever. Is uh, taxis usually have a lease fee or, or a exclusive fee, whatever, to come to the airport, <coughs> sign on, whatever. And so, like, we'll just say yellow taxi, okay, certain taxis can't come to the airport or can't go, whatever it be. Our, our problem with that, Sam, is there's just <coughs> nobody who, we, we, there's nobody up here who has, who no, has no. enough taxis. Well, that, that's not the, the point. The point is, whoever our taxis are, instead of playing the game of the, the, the ticket coming in or whatever, they pay a lease fee and they have freedom of movement, they don't have to play the game of whatever it might be. I, I'm just throwing that out as, as an idea, maybe, to think about. What I have uh, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's an alternate approach. I think that <coughs> from our standpoint, I believe that we would probably do better on a per fee, per tree, a per fee trip than an annual basis. But that is something we may need to go with that. If MAPCO, well, if this okay. can't work out with MAPCO, I need to talk with Chad about what we can would do. Would they recommend it? I need to talk with Chad about that. Okay. I was hoping to right. do that maybe well, this week. Well, we're through that. We're going to see what yep, works. There's a couple different, <coughs> different, <coughs> different options we could I mean, I'm just saying is the we have a business office, okay? And it's like, what do you want to do? Keep comp, you know, how complicated do you want to make this? You know, money's coming, going there, whatever. Maybe Fred has a different idea about this, whatever. But and there's nothing wrong with your idea. I'm not saying that, whatever. I'm just saying is, you know, you want to explore the other avenue as much as well as that way also. Can we can we explore that your your thought process a little bit more? I mean, I'm almost thinking kind of like on your lines. The reason being is if you have some skin in the game and you own that taxi service, you're going to put the airport people ahead of Dougie the calls down <coughs> Madison Street. Yeah. And I think we want to make sure we have really good service for our people at the airport that they're not waiting there for 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. Since you've got skin in the game, you're probably going to put Patrick ahead of Doug. That's my opinion. I, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with what you're thinking. I, I also think in Ogdensburg, taxis at 8:30 to 10 o'clock in the morning probably aren't going to be very busy. So I okay. think the airport would, would represent a pretty good opportunity okay. for them to pick up additional okay. business, yeah. as opposed to, you know, I, I can't imagine they're doing a whole lot else during that time frame. But you know, once again, I can, I'll explore either way. And uh, absolutely, uh, make, make it, you know, make a sound decision what right. makes sense for you. I mean, that's your, that's something you have to work with, and you, that should be your expertise right. to say this is what works and what doesn't work. I want to go back to uh, the vending machine, whatever, because one of the thoughts that. Well, Wade and I talked about, and some other people on the board is, is we don't have a lot of ability for um, uh, internal generation of money, revenue, whatever. I mean, so if that's all you got, and you got 150 people waiting in there, or whatever, you say, all right, and it's a long story, whatever. But I was involved with host host hotels in, at the airport in Tampa, and they say, okay, you got one shot to get them. Okay, and the one shot is what are they going to buy? Are they going to buy a newspaper? Are they going to buy a drink? They're going to buy, you know, whatever they're going to buy. And we don't have anything. We got a machine over there, or whatever. So, and maybe something we need to discuss is, you know, when we, you know, travel a lot and see people have push carts, and they have a business with a push cart, and so they charge sandwiches, whatever, and 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 so, is it the idea for them to make money right off the bat? Probably yes. And probably make a, a service for our customers that come in to say because they're going to be on that plane for three hours, and if it's ten o'clock or eight o'clock or whatever the flight time is, whatever, you're stuck in between breakfast and lunch, whatever. And so grab something, whatever, at the last moment, whatever. Uh, they like coffee, obviously, and so I think we need to look at that also, John, just to see exactly uh, are limited for space, you know, in, in there, whatever. It's kind of, it's kind of gelled in there pretty good, but um, I, I think once customers have the ability to buy something, whatever, and, and maybe there's no vendor out there that wants to take that step. I mean, push cart, whatever, I mean, all those type of things, but I mean, kind of look at that. Just yeah, uh, a couple of things. Going back to um, the taxis, we'll raise that issue with BAPCO today. We have, uh, Fred and I have a conference call with BAPCO at 11 o'clock today, so we'll raise that issue. Um, Second item on the vending machine, 
I know we only have space for two in the whole room side of things. Okay. Could you talk talk with uh, Charlie Howe, please, and find a space for a third one in the um, unsecured side of the airport? Um, because I think that that would be important too. So if you're coming off the plane and you're waiting for your bags to be unloaded, <coughs> you've uh, got a chance where you could buy a you know buy a soda or water or something something like that. That is the uh, that is the, the right now. That was the location that we um, designated in the holding area or excuse me in the the back storage area for the ATM yes. the preferred location I, mean, I know it, it is tight she gave me a couple of couple choices um, but no I will definitely okay. speak with Charlie and see what we what well maybe there's somewhere we can squeeze one on the unsecured side because it, it's great that you can get something yeah it, the right secured. now it is in the secured it is in the secured side not the not the unsecured at least from what I understand with the, of the layout thanks John yeah Jack go back to the taxi deal we, we talked about this probably I don't know, maybe six eight months ago a year ago and up to say the Canadians came in on a bus what are we gonna do if a bus comes in with 40 people, you know, we're going to charge them X amount of dollars too? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a good question. It's, I mean, it's just, we probably need yeah, to well, think about saying. how that's we're going to handle it. We have MAPCO <coughs> is capable of handling, but I mean, that one's probably more of a, we don't know if they're, we don't know if they're coming, how they're coming. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit harder to kind of prepare for, but we should, you know. Uh, we should be prepared for it. MAPCO's working. We have pro set with MAPCO. Okay. All right. Great. <coughs> Uh, that makes me think of that same line Excuse about me. taxis. Somebody might be able to target yeah, Walmart and take a taxi, a ten dollar taxi ride to save one hundred fifty dollars in market. And so we got to make sure that they, that we get something out of that mm -hmm. uh, taxi bringing people. You know, I don't know that Walmart would allow it. But I'm just saying Walmart could be uh, out here. <laughs> when we <laughs> talked with Matt from before, they said that they can have a sticker, like a little card that we issue, so say a taxi company wants to operate out of here, we can make them whatever we decide, say a fee for the airport sticker, say you're allowed to operate out of the airport. Right. And we can put standards <coughs> to what we want for the taxi. So, you know, dress, whatever you want. We want to a certain level of standard, right? right. So when we put an RFP on for taxi service here, we get maybe one company, maybe three. Like I said, I don't know how many taxi companies are in the area. Now when we do home. that, they get that sticker, it basically has a chip in it. Every time they come through that initial opening, it automatically charges onto an account, and once a month, they pay for how many times they've come. They and that's what, account. yeah. So that's how MAPCO is planning something that we talk about. Um, so you can hit them with a fee to operate. We can also control the minimum standards clause in there that makes them have to have a certain level of service, and then charge them per trip that they have coming through. We can do this with bus companies as well. Bus companies. Let me suggest this. Why don't we get MAPCO in here for the next meeting? And I mean, MAPCO is us. They are right, our yeah. agent. Yeah. And we'll have them explain their thoughts, and that way you're hearing it directly from them. Yeah, that's the biggest, biggest factor I have to dovetail well, on what you're saying. It's important the level of service. I guess all, all I'm going at is, and I know we only have one or two. Mm -hmm. But we still can insist on those one and two of the level of service, the type of vehicle, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the quality of dress. I mean, I don't need somebody coming in from Ottawa or from, from, from Florida, their first time ever being here, and some guy or some gal looking like a mess. And that's what you're going to have here. <laughs> and we always say one thing to remember with the airport. What do you remember? The first thing you see is the first thing you remember, and the last thing you I see mean, is the last how, thing you remember. How would you feel, get, how would you feel getting down. off the plane if some guy grabs your luggage and just keeves it in the back of the, you know, I mean, you're like, oh my God, what am I getting myself into? Well, um, we're off to the races. We're off to the races. And, you know, it's like three months from now, we're... We're, we're at a point where we have to perform, do all the type of things, whatever. Uh, and I, I think you specifically <coughs> take this on very nicely, okay, and work together with Patrick and start to understand exactly what the dynamics are. And so th this is a good stuff. This yeah. is all good stuff, whatever. And so I appreciate what you what you started started, okay. And obviously, uh, our phase here is is to initiate service 
and maintain it for a long, long time. And so that's the dynamics of everything that we do is that first impression that we're working at right now. What's that first impression going to be? Because it could break us or it could make us. And so that's that's the difficulty here of what, what we problem solve. We may not get all the problems that we understand that we're going to deal with, but we'll deal with what we're going to deal with. I have a concern about uh, looking at the flights and stuff, whatever, and I want to make sure that we cover two parts of our flight service so far, and, and that is Lauderdale. I, I noticed the flights to Lauderdale aren't selling as, as the way that the flights to Orlando are at this point in time. I don't know the dynamics of our passengers, where they're going, why they were, why they're waiting, or maybe you know whatever it might be. Or I mean, uh, Lauderdale is a cruise port area. And so people maybe don't take cruises in October. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I mean, to me, it's always, you know, that's a different time of year. I've always took cruises on the other end of winter. You know, it's like, yeah, I want to, summer's just getting over in October, you know, up here. You know, so it's like, I, I don't know. But maybe something, John, you can look at the market approach and see exactly why Lauderdale, and what are the dynamics between Lauderdale and, 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 and Orlando? I mean, family service. Probably more families go to Orlando versus uh, uh, maybe the senior citizen people clientele goes to large. I, I don't know. I don't know. But that's something you can ask down there or whatever. You work with those people and see what really what that dynamic is going to be. I can provide a little bit of context. We had a meeting with Allegiant this week uh, where some of their senior representatives were on the site on the operations side, and uh, they were at 40% uh, of capacity uh, so far, and they were very pleased by that higher than what they had anticipated so far. For? Uh, for overall. Overall. So 40% started off. Okay. <coughs> another 50% to go to meet their criteria. Okay. That's good. Three months away. Anything? Go ahead, Jeff. Yep. Some other things we need to kind of look at. I passed around, um, as, you know, I think at the last time at a marketing committee meeting, we were directed kind of to bring back some logo options for your consideration. <coughs> I think everybody has three of those in front of them. Um, you know, if it's the committee's preference uh, for one of those, we'd like to move that out so that can go to the full board for, I guess, for, for adoption. Um, you know, commit logos are very subjective. You know, we've, we've certainly, Pat, Patrick, uh, with some of his other airport connections, we've sampled some of these around with people and got people's reactions and and it's it's like with anything when you're looking at something some people like things some people don't yep. so i mean it's just we can spend an incredible amount of time doing this i think ultimately we have something that we can move forward with and i guess i'd like to see us um you know unless there's a strong feeling that we still need something different um to, to kind of move forward is that possible What's your recommendation, page one, two, or three? I, I think our recommendation from Patrick I is the is the top one, is the one that's on your cover sheet. Okay. I I, will, I was going to throw a little something at you a little bit in regards to the three things, whatever. I, I showed it to numerous people. I said, which one did you think, okay, was was the best one, whatever, to what you wanted to say, and it was the top one. And he said, what it did was, it was clearly easier to read. OGS, whatever it want to be, and so I said, so that's okay. I mean, it's simple, it's plain, it's you know, and it's like, ooh. Patrick actually wanted we we dummied up some. Uh, he needed to have some business cards to take uh, to take with him uh, for his trip here coming up. So we actually did prepare a couple just so that he had some the something to hand out when he's at this yeah. conference that he's going to. And looks, I don't know, I think it looks pretty good on a business card, uh, at least initial the initial really setup. So. Awesome. Got you. So is the uh, preference of the committee for option like one as well? I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like okay, that. let's move it to yeah. the nice. formal. You keep that one. Formal one just, board for I don't have a ton. No, that's okay. It's one of I, know, okay. I know Sam wanted to see that. So. Yeah, okay. that's, that's awesome. But, but I think it looks nice. nice. Yeah, it does look good. I'm sorry, I'm a little out of process. I guess we should probably have a motion and a second to move that yeah, uh, forward to the little board. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam, you second. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tie. We had two, two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> we had two seconds. All in favor, I was like, aye. Okay. Very good. Okay. I like this. Two last things that I kind of want to just touch base on here. Oh, I'm sorry, three. Um, 
Sam, you would, we, had, we met with, uh, Sam met a Canadian couple on a flight um, and then introduced them to me. Uh, we, Sam and I met with them here. They are very interested in the airport. They recognize the, uh, she is in um, sales and marketing professionally. Uh, she's a realtor. Her husband is a pilot for Canadian Air, Air for Air Canada. They have a, a wealth of knowledge and connections in the Ottawa area. The concept that they kind of talked about was her being our, let's say our foot soldier a little bit, a feet on the street, somebody in that area that can draw connections for us, <coughs> be essentially an ambassador for our airport in that region. There's certainly some value in that, I think, as we initially as we move forward because it's an incredible challenge to, to create that type of awareness up there right now. Um, is this something that the the committee would be interested in receiving a proposal? I mean, we've made you know that just it was uh, I did not quite honestly when Sam introduced me to him, I didn't even know what we were meeting with them over. But it, you know, it, it's it was, it was a very interesting concept. I mean, he certainly had a lot of interesting points about Air Canada and things that I think we need to emphasize the way Air Canada is the way a lot of Canadian flights are being robbed through Toronto. Um, you know, he said the, the, the market to capitalize on the convenience, the trip here, they said they couldn't believe they got here in 55 minutes. There's a lot of points that I think we really, you know, can, can kind of use in our marketing to try to say, you know, and that, that's kind of a little bit of our approach right now is start your vacation sooner, don't you? You don't want to waste, waste your time basically sitting in, driving to airports, spending time in, de in airports that aren't your destination. So, you know, I think there's a market that we can capitalize on there. Uh, I, I like I say I think you know Sam I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that. Well, the, the thing is when you have uh, I'll call it uh, personal conversation with somebody you don't know exactly who you're talking to and what they bring to you to the table whatever the gentleman uh, coming back on a flight and we talked for 45 minutes to an hour and you know about the dynamics and his wife was this that whatever I had no idea specifically it was just an average person that lived up in Ottawa and what the dynamics and, and his comment to me was on the plane was uh, my wife is this, this, and whatever I'm going, well, okay. And then all of a sudden the presentation comes on the formal side, the business side, was the dynamics of people was, oh, that makes sense. We need somebody who knows the inside, inside capability of, of connections of Chamber of Commerce and type of things wherever you have to give presentations, whatever. And, and so what I was feeling, and, and John and I were talking about it, and by the way, John did an outstanding job presenting at that, at that informal meeting, was is how do we buffer into their system and not look like the enemy? Does that make sense? I mean, it's like you're not the bulldog coming in and, and grabbing, trying to grab business, but, but really to really in essence to uh, put yourself out for the the low-cost carrier, the vacation traveler, okay, that that we could normally, we, who normally wouldn't fly, we would put them in the air because of the cost things that we have and the convenience that we have. And so, you know, wait now, go back, is in essence what, what we had to sell to the FAA and all this funding was, wasn't about the Canadian passenger, it wasn't about the American passenger, it was put people in the air. This is about the travelers, and to build the business, okay, the air business. And, and so that's what we have. It's like an essence of building an air business for everybody. And so I thought when I met these people, John, whatever, my God, we, now we all of a sudden we have someone who can open doors for us. Um, it might be better people, but I, I was impressed with what I, what I heard, whatever, with those people, whatever. I, I just, and so I guess the committee have to decide if they're, where they want to go with it because I thought it was outstanding. Oh, a couple comments on that. Uh, number one, we need to do what we need to do to follow our procurement policy with anything. Uh, right. But I don't know what the dollar amount is that we're talking about here. Uh, number two, any discussions should have at least terms of 120 days plus at this point, given their financial condition. Um, so with, with those two things in mind, um, th those are my thoughts associated with it. And you know, playing devil's advocate on, on stuff too. Is, you know, when we're talking on a financial end, and 
a little tight money wise right now. Um, I mean, that might be something we look long term. Um, I, 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 and, I, and then the other thing that pops into my head is, hey, do we have people on this side that do those type of things for a living, that have those contacts in Ottawa, and we're paying somebody from the U.S. And, or New York, opposed to giving our money to a Canadian, you know, Canadian firm? Well, you know, when, when I start thinking about this, I think of uh, Ben McClellan, you know, and it's like, you know, there's somebody who's on the other side. I was thinking the other way that trying to understand the trucking business, okay, and advertise no, and get in there or whatever. I mean, so there's actually there's two sides. No, this. I appreciate. You, it. Yeah, it's you're right. yeah, there's no, two no, sides. I mean, we got to sell this side, but I know the potential is greater. The, right. The draw is over there, but you're right. Both no, sides I, we need to go after this, but um, it's slightly harder to open there than they are here. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's just like just like anything, if you've got if you've got a local person, you know the the, the warm handoff is a lot easier. So I I understand and appreciate that for sure. I think if we follow the procurement policy, we will get uh, other options. Right. And that this may very well be a best option. But I think that's what you should do. I, I tell you what I think, and uh, my brain just racing this morning, is is the idea that. The excitement, when the excitement wears off, the excitement <coughs> wears off, okay? Remember, remember the rush we had a month ago, okay? We announced and this, that, whatever, okay? Is when the, now we have to grind to get people, you know, after the rush is off, right? You know, and I'm not sure when that is. I'm not sure when that is, but that's the dynamics of, of people who understand the business better than we do will say, you know, this is what you have to do, whatever. We have to build this business. We have to build it, and so how we build it, I don't know the dynamics of how to build it. Well, it's a, it's a type of situation now where you can't let up. You gotta, no, you okay. gotta, you right. gotta keep it. And, 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 that, and that's what I'm agreeing on both. And so that's what I'm saying. I think that there, we should follow our procurement policy and look into those avenues, yep. whoever it is, because I think long term we're going to need that. Sure. Well, good. We cannot afford to lose this air service. No. We cannot. I mean, if you ever felt pressure or anything I've done here in a length of time, this is exactly this right, right. here. Yeah. We are in extreme pressure to make this work. Yeah. And, and if that's a nice report you got, Wade, that, you know, that 40% or whatever the percentages are that's already out there. I, I've talked to people that I play golf in Canada and stuff like that. Some people still don't know about it. Still do not know about what's going on here. Absolutely. They really yeah. don't. You know, so... And before they... They plan their vacation travel. Some people travel to the last moment. Some people I plan six months, a year ahead sometimes, you know. So I don't know. One thing in that regard, just one final you know, I know a, a couple of this you know, we do have some things coming up, some uh, advertising initiatives coming up that will start to get our name back out there more. Um, I'm getting a quote on some rack cards from over at head, uh, so to start to look at some things like that, Gavin, I know you brought mm -hmm. that up. We, I met yesterday with the county chamber, and the county chamber would be willing to match funds with us. Um, and I'd be proposing it's about four thousand one hundred sixty-five dollars through the end of the year, through December. It's about eight hundred thirty-three dollars that they would match. We'd have about a little under ten thousand dollars for essentially a geo-targeted kind of campaign. We could pick, pick our demographics that we want, the regions that we want. And essentially, these ads will track you just the way I'm sure you know, you've guys have been on the internet. You've seen how ads follow you. That's essentially a way that we would get people <coughs> to start, you know, between that and different types of, you know, we met. Um, I think it sounded like a very good proposal. And I'd like to move forward with that through the end of the year. We will be able to monitor our results. And if, you know, Brooke was saying, you know, she would like to continue this if, in fact, they get I Love New York funds for 2017, that might be something we would continue. But that is another initiative that we would have forward. So okay. that's pretty much my report, and I know we're pressed for time. How, how crazy does this sound? I, our largest employer is the county, right? People who work in the county. I would say probably one of our largest employers. I, I don't know. No. The, the universities. Yeah, the, either universities. What if we what if we make it like for example what if we reach out to Ruth Doyle I mean she's from here who lives in you know, the the administrator and if we had something that they would allow us to 
I mean, I know everybody does payroll deduction, I mean, there's a direct deposit, but if you still get a copy of your stub. If we could put something in, like one of their pay, pay things, you got hundreds of people that are local in St. Lawrence County and say, hey, you know, this is available to you. You know, you could, you could piggyback on that and, and that'd be a start, but then go to school districts, right. go all over, you right. know, because, you know, a lot of, a lot of teachers go on vacation. And <laughs> hey, we used to do, we used to, well, we used to do yeah. it simply with your 403Bs. Yeah. We put payroll yeah. stuffers yeah. to school and let them put them in. Yeah. Well, when I, when I talk with a couple of universities and whatever is, is, is the charter service that we could work off this with the Legion. I don't, I don't know the dynamics of it yet, whatever, but they have, Sports teams and stuff go south. What we want to do, okay, is you know organize. They have uh, Clarkson has a sponsored trip for whatever they do, and uh, I mean it's, it's lots of money. They pay more than more than if they charter this plane to have have this service, whatever. So I think activities people, whatever, maybe at the universities, might be a connection thing to you know look at, see how they plan their trips. In, in a um, lot. In a lot. To, to a lot of times, too, is uh, some of these teams will book uh, just regular regular service also. Yeah. They save a lot more money than they do, you know, on the charter. So yeah. that's a... That's a going to these locations. Yeah. Anything else on the marketing side, Jeff? No. No, sir. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Let's go right into the operations. Uh, we are a little pressed for time this morning, uh, given everything going on, so let's go ahead and get right to it. Under the fueling pump system, you'll see uh, an EFS proposal there. Um, our fueling uh, system, our pump system, is uh, vintage 1982 and it failed. Uh, to make a long story short, and of course it fails right when you need it. Uh, this is a highly specialized system and the cost to replace it and get it on site in time for the fueling is $106,191. Um, and this needs to be purchased yesterday. This is the primary reason for the committee meeting today. So we're requesting approval from the committee um, and then corresponding outreach to the board electronically for additional approval. Well, I, I think personally that, uh, you know, this is, a, and we, we gotta have it. It's, it, oh, it and it, it, it goes right along to what we've been dealing with with the airport since its inception. It seems like every day something else pops up and we, you know, and we got to keep going and, and uh, we need this. It's, it's uh, very important to that project, so I, 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 I think we have to approve this. Unfortunately, it's one of those non-negotiable health yeah. and safety issues. Absolutely, absolutely. This is the heart and soul of the operations. Sure. If you don't have fuel, yeah. we don't have air. Um, and the, the, the good thing about this quote, if you look into it, the piping, everything in this, this all quote, it was from the tank, it was from when we had the tank design, it was built all the way up to the back of that cabinet. Everything inside of that cabinet is 35 years old. Mm -hmm. Standards have changed, and it was fine before we had the Part 139 airports, now, or airplanes. Now we have these larger aircraft, we're held to different standards. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about it is we needed to do this upgrade anyway. If we do upgrade in the future, that's all done. The only thing that would possibly have to be done is a pump, maybe in the future. But this will get us through, and it does everything. So we're brand new. We've got new tanks, new pumps, new fuel trucks. I mean, it just makes sense. It. Why would you buy a car and not ask for a new motor in it? Mm -hmm. This is the motor. Okay. I'll second it then. You're you're very comfortable. This will. I, and I think I asked Wade this question before, and it is. Uh, you know, in the future, we get different companies so, coming in. You know, we're going to so have to build on deal. top of this, right? If we need to go, let's say, in the future, another 10,000 gallon tank right next to it, this system will still we'll support still that 10,000 okay. gallon tank. Now, what will not, uh, in a perfect world, we would have three phase power mm -hmm. to the FBL. Three phase power gets you the size pump that you need to get the 300 gallons per minute that we need to fill these trucks. Unfortunately, it's not realistic, and we don't have the, fi the funding to get three-phase power out there right now. It's just not a reality. We can get this pump as single phase with a power converter that jumps us up to a three-phase, and we get about 200 gallons per minute. It's the best we're gonna do unless we have three-phase power. 
Okay. Now down the road, we get the three-phase power, you replace the pump, all the piping is still good. Okay. It's just the pump and the wiring that would have to be redone. Well, let me ask you a question, Lee. Yes, yes, sir. If we, if we get the employments that we're looking for and we get that money from the FAA, right, pretend whatever, can that money be used to do that three-phase? Unfortunately not. The general rule with the FAA AEIP eligible money it can be used for anything except for revenue generation. Okay. So <laughs> probably not, but okay. being an electrical feed, we'll check into it. Maybe there's such a thing as a three phase uh, to the ARF building, yeah. for example, sure. um, that we can tie into. Okay. So probably not, but we'll look into it okay. when we get there. Well, you, you kind of answered my, my question. The question is the, uh, the criteria for pumps or safety regulations or updating or things, whatever. Is this pump and stuff, state of the art, nothing's going to change, and you don't see any new requirements coming up in the future? Well, that's hard to say. I mean, well, I in the right future. <laughs> but right now, it meets ATA 103 and okay. NFPA 407 standards. Okay. Well, you did say one thing, if we have to, uh, you know, if it connects to the other 10,000 gallon tank, it, it'll, it'll do that or whatever. Yeah. I don't see any need for 200 more gallons uh, a minute, because you already have a truck that's already going to be full, right? And then you well, might fill that truck, and, you, and even then, as you bring the other truck back, you still have a truck full. What's difficult is you got to think about it. Right now, they're saying we're getting about 100. I think we're more like 75. You're standing out there in the snowbank with a dead man switch in your hand for an hour to fill up one truck. Yeah. That's a long time to ask someone to stand out in the cold, and they're supposed to be paying attention to what they're doing, right? Um, and especially when we have staffing with, most of the time, there's only one person there. And we're going to be doing snow removal, refueling aircraft. We've got, a, you know, there's a lot of things going on there. At 300 you're gallons, still, you're, you're, still almost, you're still almost a half an hour. We're still. That's why it's not ideal. But yeah. at least we're we're a hundred percent better than what we were. Yeah. So you're half as opposed to an hour. It's actually twenty five minutes, I think. Well, what I'm saying is we're not under a rush and pressure that, all right, that we have. To, Come on, hurry up, get this thing going, or whatever. In that turnaround, we have the backup truck to do whatever we need to do. So, yeah. I mean, I don't want any haste. I guess that's what makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. That you know allows for a spill or whatever you know you know what I'm saying you, 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 that's your business you know but no mistakes I don't know if I'm saying well, I, you know. and the and the human factor is the biggest issue in anything in operation yeah, it's a human factor right. issue right. the longer that guy's sitting there with that dead man switch in his hand the more he's going to be thinking about ways he's going to bypass that dead man switch so he can get a cup of coffee because he knows it's going to take an hour and that's the stuff you're trying to avoid you don't want that. Yeah. There's one thing in here I'd like to alter uh, as we approve this, and that's we estimate this project can be completed uh, by September 28, 2016. I'd like that to be a guarantee because we need that in place and functioning for October, for the October startup. You want me to get them to write a guarantee? I'll cross it out and initial it once we get uh, the board off. For, just to let the board know, we've talked about this. If for any reason this, like we said, if, if something happens, we need a backup. These guys said that they will provide us a backup, so no matter what, we will have it in place. We'll be ready to go. Good. All right. They okay. said they will make it work one way or another. They will make it work for that startup date. The problem is, we got to get stuff ordered. Right? Yep. Sure. Because every day, every Literally. week. I'll hold that. That'll be. Second. Can I second that? Yeah, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. There you go. Okay. The uh, next item up, uh, 2B, is the storage building. <coughs> we need to have. Uh, actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to take these out of order. Um, Let's go right down to the GSE apron. We'll start from the foundation off. Uh, GSE apron, other such matters. Now under the GSE apron, uh, what we have to do is we have to put, uh, uh, peel back the dirt, put down fabric, put in stone, and uh, uh, 
put in pavement, and again, this is not just one layer of pavement because you have heavy things sitting on there. So the total cost of this uh, is $83,025 plus the building costs. So that gets us to the pavement. Then we would need to put the concrete uh, blocks on the pavement and then put up the temporary uh, building. But this just deals strictly with authorization to put the GSE uh, ground handling apron in. And the reason this is here, this exceeds uh, Steve Lawrence and my authority under the change orders. This cost, uh, as a note, is 100% on us. Wait, we talked about, I mean, the, the, you know, chipping in the eight here or whatever, obviously we have to have this foundation for, for the building that we have next or whatever. If, if that building, call it temporary, whatever the life expectancy is, that building, whatever, is this platform worth anything after we remove the building, or is just we just build it for that particular building and it's done? Oh, definitely. You could put another building potentially right beside it, take down the temporary building, and you've got an extra GSE apron there. Okay. Or you could uh, conceptually, right. if you wanted to, put up a permanent building in that location. Okay. Then that probably was, would probably come back to say, okay, in, in this, the essence of time and what we need, uh, I'm not sure. I, I would. I guess what I'm looking at is, I wish we had more time with this and thought about this thing, whatever, and it's like we're stuck. And to me, is, I, I, to me aesthetically, I'd like to have a building that was constructed that blends in with our, our terminal building, even though our terminal building may not have a, a, a lifetime more than five years, or whatever it may be, but some sort of building that has some aesthetic value that, what is this thing here, whatever, what's this hot spot thing, whatever. But, I know in the dynamics of time and money, that's why I'm asked your question is, if we come back to maybe a, a different function of a building or whatever, permanently or whatever, later on. I mean, I guess that's what... Well, I think once once we expand the terminal building and stuff, you're going to have to expand expand this, I would think, and, you know, into a permanent situation. And, yeah. You know, in five years, when, if we go back and revamp that whole terminal, the, the whole dynamics of that is going to change. and. And what we have now is, you know. Yeah. yeah, what we have now is going to be obsolete. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's unfortunate, but this is needed because you have to have the ground handling mm -hmm. equipment. You need yeah. to have the ramps, you need yeah. to have the, uh, the icing trucks, and you've yeah. got to have the corresponding foundation underneath it. So the icing truck is critical. We, we knew this was coming because we had we talked about that before, even on the original design of the terminal, that we have no storage built. We have, you know. Yes. So. And now from a strategic standpoint, everything that you look at with this airport, I know you guys have gone, you've done two years worth of work in the last, almost three years worth in the last year. Um, the master plan is pretty much up to where we are right now. So we've got to start thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I was going to say is, is the storage is a, is a big deal that I'm losing sleep over because if I start getting snow removal equipment and all these yeah. different things, I've got no facilities to put the equipment in. I can't do maintenance. I can't do a lot. Yeah. I know this isn't going to be for me right now, but I'm still looking down in the future, and a temporary building can be moved. Mm -hmm. So we're not we're spending money. I get it, but down the road, we'll still be able to use that exactly. ramp because we're going to need to expand airlines and GSE. That's got to be there. And down the road, if we can build a building like you're saying that meshes with the terminal, that temporary building can be upped, and I have visions of it living over on the GA side. Yeah. And being able to be used over there, still, okay. sure. And that's kind of the way I, I was trying to look at this and think, okay, how does this make sense for now, but make sense in the future as well? And this is the only way I could do it. And we thought about, you know, just a metal building, just a frame building, but it doesn't do us any good later. If, yeah. if we gr outgrow that building, it doesn't do anything for us. And I believe this will. Well, okay. So what does this include for eighty-three thousand twenty-five dollars? Uh, this would be cost not to exceed. It requires the excavation, the sub base, the binder, the electrical service, and the topsoil seating uh, and uh, miscellaneous work associated with this. <coughs> and the reason why we went with that uh, thicker foundation on there was so that it would support if we uh, have room in that building. I built it oversized, it's uh, that 100 foot. If we get um, some of the equipment out of there for the GSE, it turns out they don't need the space. 
our snow equipment will be able to be supported inside that building, which is why we built the, the base as we built it. Yeah. I guess the question I have, Reed, and I know Regional Council provided us with $500,000 for the terminal building. Is there any way to backlog any of this stuff that uh, for Regional Council to consider to help us out later on because we have to back on this? Is there any way to... There is none, Mr. Chairman. Nothing, nothing, no consideration, nothing to have. Hmm. Well, we have anything else coming up that seems like we're full of surprises that are coming at us. Okay. Um, I guess we moved it, did we? We'll make that motion. Second. Favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, so now that we're at ground level, let's talk about the building. Um, let's go ahead and, and uh, talk about the, the uh, storage building. So, I apologize, I can't rotate this on the screen here for some reason, but uh, this is what the building looks like. As you can see. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mount that on a two foot high cement block so that way when you run into the edge of the building, you don't damage the building, you damage the cement block, plus it gives us a little bit extra height in there. So this is a GS, this is a 65 foot by 100 foot building. It is a standard off the shelf building at a cost of $77,500. Now uh, the other unknown here is the authority forces will install this facility on site. So this is this is going to be done by the OBPA to keep costs down. Now by comparison, the engineer uh, quoted us a temporary building that would cost two hundred ninety thousand uh, dollars. Those were some hard numbers that they had associated with this. Uh, we're doing it ourselves with standard off-the-shelf uh, uh, building and the concrete blocks associated with it for 77500 plus whatever labor that we have to do it. It is important to note, so when you say standard off the shelf, this is coming through with engineering plans stamped as well as part of this. Thank you. And it's also important, uh, the other reason for this uh, building is uh, this type of building also meets the snow load. Uh, criteria for our region as well. Well, that, that got me to a point of um, thinking about a Ford foundation versus a uh, cement block wall, whatever, that the force load out, you know what I'm saying, versus uh, blocks, it's not as strong, is that able to handle that? Um, the blocks will be able to handle it, plus if you pour something, you don't have a temporary foundation at that point. If you have blocks, you could be located. Okay. You could move this building within the airport. You could move it down to the port. Uh, again, a variety of different things you can do with them. As soon as you lock it in and make it permanent. permanent. You still have to attach it to a sill plate. But, but maybe the next building we want a little bit of different design or a little wider or what, you know, what have you there. And uh, maybe, uh, okay. you know, maybe, maybe at that time we pour the. Well, you yeah. still have to have footers. You yeah. still have to have footers. I mean, well, you're going to have footers in the concrete. These blocks are two foot by two foot by six, and they weigh 3,000 pounds a piece. That's and they would be coming from uh, Graymont in the industrial park. Mm -hmm. That's a good good size block. So that's size well, block. I'll tell you what, you, you got yourself a great deal here. You got yourself a great deal. I mean, for what you're looking at and look at the speed of time, whatever. So, obviously, you answered my question, you knew exactly what you, know, what you have to do. So. Confident we can put this up. We will be confident eventually we can put this up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, what is it? It's not rocket science, but it is building oh, science. Oh, You're moving it? I'll, I'll, move it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Color. I oh, didn't ask that part. Color. Gray. <laughs> I think it's gray, but that's a good question. 
I haven't moved that far yet. <laughs> well, if it's a cream color, it, if it's yeah. a cream color, you know, somewhere the closer you can to blend in, whatever. Yep. So it's not a it should be okay. Everything in the, it, it all shows it's like a cream white type yeah, of color. Yeah, 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 neutral color. Yeah, yeah okay. white. I don't think they give you an option. I think it's that typical white. Well, let's say I selected the cream color. Yeah. <laughs> like I selected the cream color. <laughs> 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 All works for us. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, next up is uh, MAPCO. Uh, specifically, uh, we have revenue control, um, they call it PARCS, Parking Area Revenue Control Systems. The, the control system that we need out at the airport, um, they've offered to purchase it uh, for us and charge us back for it. Um, they have requested to extend the contract um, for, to 10 year term instead of seven to align the uh, cost of the uh, park system, the revenue control system, with the um, life of the asset. With the, yeah, with the amortization. I see no reason why. I mean, this request makes sense from a financial point of view. It also makes sense from the uh, revenue uh, uh, control point of view and wanted to bring this forth for your consideration. And if <coughs> we were to decide after three years that MAPCO is not a good partner, uh, this does not mean it has to go 10 years. We could end it, but then we'd have to pay it all back. Mm -hmm. So it's still the buyout cost. The buyout. Yeah. All other conditions of the contract remain the same. The same. Yes, including that. Well, I think it's outstanding for MAPCO, whatever. I mean, obviously, uh, that whatever obviously it's, it's a good business thing for them that they have some sort of guarantee. Fred, you recommend this? Yes. Okay. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Polls. Motion carried. And last up, in the interest of time, I would suggest that we table the airport committee charter. Um, if there's a way you can look at that between now and the next meeting. Tweak it however you'd like to tweak it, um, and we'll see about adoption. Sounds good. Just so you know, on that other one, other point was uh, they're going to charge interest at the exact same rate as whatever we get for buying. Yeah. That was, that was very, very, very nice. good deal. Very That's good deal. Good. In, in regards to this charter, I mean, I, I you, you and I, and I said. I looked at other airports that have a mission statement, whatever. And the mission statement, and I know you and I had this discussion, has to follow our guidelines as a port authority. Am I correct? Versus separated, or can we have a mission statement for each identity of what we do? You can have a separate mission statement for the airport, but it needs to layer in and be consistent with the overall mission statement okay. for the authority. Okay. Well, I, I have to remember to go back and look at the one I sent out for, you know, one like a rough craft there. But this is excellent. I, you know, the dynamics of who we are as a group, whatever, it's like, okay, here we are. Good. I'm good. Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good meeting, everybody.